Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Outside the Box. It's episode 89. Today we're going to be talking about some NBA action from last night, the Lakers tribute to Kobe Bryant, and also, you know, LeBron James' speech and the game, of course. So Damian Lillard completely goes off and he needs to stop it. Dame time is spoiling us. Also, other NBA action. The Nuggets somehow beat the Bucks with no Gary Harris, no Jamal Murray, no Paul Millsap. I don't know how they did it. And Kyrie Irving goes off on the Bulls. We're going to flip over to some NCAA action from the men's and women's side. And last but not least, I'm going to give you my top games for today. Come on in. Stick along for the ride because this is sports outside the box. Hello, look away from the in this game that hasn't taken a giant step forward. Smith with a two-man flush. 18-12. Irving. A target. A three. One of the greatest hits in Eagles history. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Outside the Box, episode 89. And of course, we're almost at 100, so I might need to try to find somebody for the 100th episode, but we'll see what happens. Um, but today so far, my Saturday is going pretty good. Hope everybody's Saturday out there is going good. I'm not really doing too much today, kind of like, you know, just prepping, getting ready for the Super Bowl tomorrow. And I don't know, I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do, friend's house, grandmother's house, aunt's house, who knows what's going to happen, but... Uh, I know I will not be home when when the Super Bowl comes on tomorrow. I know that for a fact. I will not be home. But um, some things that have already happened today. Xavier beat number 10, Seton Hall. And, of course, I'm upset because I was just talking about Seton Hall. And then uh, I think one of the uh, last uh, YouTube videos and podcasts I've had, I used the guy from Seton Hall, Miles Powell. I used his face uh, as one of them. And I'm just so upset because he had a horrific game today. And I was like, of course, the time that I want to shout out somebody, somebody from Seton Hall. And nobody talks about nobody from Seton Hall. I shout out somebody from Seton Hall. He had like the worst game. I'm like, come on, man. He's been putting up like 20 points. And I told you like the last two seasons or three seasons been, or two seasons, he's been averaging over 20 points uh, the last two seasons. So, of course, they play Xavier today. Xavier completely dominates them. Number 10, Seton Hall falls. But... Let's go ahead and talk about what happened last night in the NBA. And up first, we're going to talk about, of course, the Lakers and Blazers game. It was the last game of the night, but it's going to be the first uh, NBA game we talk about today. And very emotional night, of course. I mean, I mean you couldn't have, get, uh, couldn't have gotten no more emotional than that. And then we saw what boys to men was there. Usher opened up their everything. We got to see everybody still uh, who was standing outside and the packed house. Everything everything was like done right in the right way. So not congratulations, but um, much respect to Jeannie Buss for what she did uh, uh, in the Lakers organization. And then we saw um, we just saw a lot of uh, form. We saw some uh, former Lakers in the building. Uh, James Worthy was in there. He was speaking on Kobe Bryant, and of course, just talking about how no words can uh, even uh, reflect or um, amount to what we want to say or how we feel right now. But uh, we're just trying to get through it as a collective, so pretty much. And, of course, the Usher song, that was nice. And then Boys to the Men doing a national anthem. The best part to me, of course, the violinist, my goodness, I'm telling you, it was just hearing the violinist last night with Kobe Bryant talking in the background, it just made it more sad. And it was like, oh, heart-wrenching. And I keep using that word lately, heart-wrenching, but everything's just like, oh, and I cried again last night. And I was like, I was telling my mom, I said, I just need one day. I just need one day where I'm not going to cry about this. Because I was like, this is, this, is, oh, this is a lot. Last night was a lot, a lot. Especially with all the tributes. And then you see all the pictures and of the family, the things that Kobe's done. And it was just it was just a lot. And it was a lot to take in. And then, of course, hearing Kobe Bryant talk and, um, the one thing that, of course, I took away from him talking and listening to what he was saying was, do you love the process? And it made me think about, of course, this podcast and now, you know, doing YouTube. It made me think about that in that respect because it's like, do I love the process of um, writing things down? Do I love the process of studying uh, who the best players are right now? Who like who should be winning these games? And uh, is, is this really an upset? Is it not an upset? And I could probably tell you already, like, I haven't been doing this podcast for a year. I know I put over 200 hours of writing into this already, and I love every minute of it. I love coming on here. I love talking to everybody, even though 
I know right now it's not the biggest following. I mean, it ain't that big, but uh, uh, we finally won over 1,800 downloads, by the way. So S SOB Squad, thank you very much, and we're gonna keep pushing. Um, but I know it's not the biggest, and I know I know we don't, I don't get the much downloads for every episode. But I love the process, and I honestly think that I could do this for years to come. Like that's a like I could sit here and write every like I write every single day. I try to get a podcast up every single day. I just love doing it. And my philosophy is like if ESPN can do it, I can do it. Even not saying, of course, I'm not as big as ESPN. It, they have time, but they have time, and I can't put all, all the information that ESPN puts out. Of course, it's so difficult to do. But just trying to love the process and being my best self, having that Mamba mentality, something that Kobe was, something Kobe definitely had, and it seemed like he created having that strong of a mentality towards something. And uh, I'm just trying to. I want all of us to be able to adopt that same thinking style and have that same uh, heart, same passion. And like how they were talking about last night, um, it seemed like, you know, people would sit there and say, Michael Jordan, man, I could never be Michael Jordan. Oh, I can never be, Le oh, be LeBron James. But it said the Kobe Bryant or the, like the Magic Johnson, I can't be Michael Jordan. But it seemed like Kobe Bryant bridged the gap because Kobe Bryant comes in 17 years old, but he shows how hard he works and how hard and how hard he just keeps going, 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 going. And they told a story last night about how Allen Iverson was like, hey, Kobe, what are you doing? I'm going to the club. You want to come? He's like, no, I'm going to the gym. And the fact that he's willing to just work like that is incredible. Uh, I, I, I want the same, like, I want to have that same mentality, that same work ethic. And put, trying to do a podcast every day for me is like trying to, you know, emulate what, what he did and try to have that same work ethic. And the only reason I even got back, only reason like me and Brian had two YouTube videos up beforehand, uh, before I came back on YouTube. But the only reason I came back on YouTube the day after Kobe died, I was like, I have to go back on YouTube. I have to do it. I have to. Because if I don't, that means I don't have that model mentality. I'm not even trying to have it. I need to do better. And this is me attempting to do better. So again, Kobe, thank you so much. I hate that I even had this mentality or have this mentality now after you've passed on. But uh, we're all trying to make you proud out here. And I know even the listeners, I know you guys are going to try and make them proud as well. And I know you guys have your own things that you do. And I know that we all just, we're just going to try to get through this together, man. That's all we can do at this point. But uh, just to go into, um, just to go into the game, uh, the started off. It started off pretty well. Started off pretty well. The Lakers looked okay. Like, well, you know, they looked okay to start the game off. It kind of looked how you expected it to look. Um, both teams sitting there like throwing passes. LeBron looked like he was going to be a freight train at first when the night began. Like he was like only only big dunks were coming his way. But of course, he went up for one big dunk, blocked, and then he went up for another one. I think he lost the ball. It was stripped, and I was like. Okay, it's gonna be one of those nights, nice, you know. Uh, but of course, you know they're they're battling emotions. They, it was an emotional ceremony that happened beforehand, so um, you, you can't fault them for the. They did lose last night, unfortunately, but you can't fault them for that. Uh, it was a lot going on last night, but uh, the whole the whole first half, you're just sitting there like, man, LeBron. I, I want to see LeBron go for fifty, and we we saw last night somebody did go for fifty last night, but we're gonna get to that. But um. AD, AD, hell of a game last night. LeBron James, he had a pretty, it was a pretty okay game for LeBron James. I think it was like shot nine for 22, nine for 22, I think. And I was like, eh, you know, it's not really what we were expecting. But of course, um, oh, the biggest thing LeBron did yesterday, of course, was during the ceremony. Yeah, I usually don't cuss on this podcast, not really. Um, but of course, he gets the piece of paper and LeBron says, Man, Laker Nation, they wanted me to they wanted me to read from this and go by a script, but I'd be selling he said, I'd be selling Laker Nation short if I read that shit. I'm gonna speak from the heart. And I was like, Oh, okay, LeBron, you you say what you need to say, man. You say what you need to say. And of course LeBron's talking and I cried all over again because I was like, man, he and of course everybody on Twitter is just talking about how strong LeBron is. Like, how was he able just to go out there and speak on that and it was like, man, but we saw when the when the violinist was playing, and then you know, Quinn Cook was oh, Quinn Cook got me so many times. I'm trying to tell you, Quinn, they kept showing Quinn Cook and how broken down he was. It broke all of us down. But LeBron James, he didn't have the best game last night. I think, like I said, I think he went nine nine of twenty two. AD, I mean, I think he had thirty six or thirty eight points last night. Kyle Kuzma came in the second half, and I think he had seven fifteen. I think he had fifteen rebounds. 
Uh, he had more rebounds on Hassan Whiteside, uh, tied Anthony Davis for the most rebounds in the game. And I'm like, man, Kyle Kuzma, if you tie AD in an overpass Hassan for rebounds in a game, then obviously you're working. And he surely was working yesterday. I'm trying to tell you. Kyle Kuzma, even I think he had three offensive rebounds. He was working on that offensive end and defensive end trying to snag them boards. LeBron just couldn't. Down the stretch, LeBron's trying to knock some threes down, just missing them, especially when he made Trevor Reza fall. When Trevor Reza fall, I was like, ah, ah, Trevor, Trevor fell, I can't believe it. And, of course, Trevor's trying to be like, man, he pushed off, man, he pushed off. I don't fall. And I, that's exactly what it looked like. He said, I don't fall. He pushed me. I was like, I was like, hey, Trevor, just take it, man. Everybody falls. Like, 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 uh, like LeBron said, like, you know. It's not the first time I got dunked on. I'm going to probably get dunked on again. So it's not the first time you fell, Trevor. You, you, you might fall again in your lifetime. Who knows? But um, land last night, of course, going into the game, the hottest player in the NBA. And we also talked about how he's like the best player right now in 2020, averaging like 33 points a game for 2020, averaging 48.5 points in four games coming into the Laker game last night. Uh, Damian Lillard, Dame time. And I even put on Instagram, put on Twitter, he is spoiling us. He is absolutely spoiling us because I can't imagine, I can't remember another time where a player's been going off this hard. Like, he's been going so hard. 48 points again last night. Almost another triple-double. I think he had, like, well, it was like 48, point, or 48 points. Uh, was it 10 assists, 9 rebounds, or 9 rebounds, 10 assists? It was something like that. It was it was flip-flopped one of the way or the other. But, man, Damian Lillard, I couldn't believe it. He's just pulling up threes, threes and one, going for a dunk in the third quarter, splitting the defense between Danny Green. And I was like, I was like, Damian Lillard, who, you know, who upset you? Who pissed in your Cheerios, man? <laughs> I can't believe the way Damian Lillard's been playing this in, in 2020. It's been absolutely remarkable, ridiculous. Any word you can think of that's positive, it's been monstrous. Like, you can, you can think, of, think of bad words. Like, he's been, man, it's a bad man. Like, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you, Daniel Lillard has been absolutely amazing. I, you can't even put that in any other words. He's been amazing. They play the Jazz tonight, I believe, and that's going to be an incredible game. And that's going to be on, it's definitely on my top five list for the NBA games today. I think there's like 10 games on tonight or nine games, but it's, it's in my top five. Trust and believe. Um, but yeah, Daniel Lillard, 48 points. And of course, he was definitely the player of the game last night. Uh, he went off in the third quarter. I think he had like 24 points in the third quarter. And I'm sitting there just, of course, in awe. He was the first person in the Staples uh, in the Staples Center since Kobe Bryant to go for 45 points and 10 assists. So, yeah, he had nine rebounds, almost a double, almost a triple-double. Remember, the last game, he just got his first triple-double. He almost went for back-to-back triple-doubles. That's how good he's playing right now. But uh, um, the biggest surprise last night, of course, was Hassan Whiteside. Nobody expected Hassan Whiteside to play that good. 30 points. I think he only had 10 rebounds. Nobody expected Hassan Whiteside to play that good. Like, it's just un uncanny of it. Like, it's not really something that you really see out of Hassan Whiteside. And something that Stephen A. Smith said, and we're all sitting there watching, we're all sitting there watching. He was like, uh, this is a, just a shock. And he's like, there's nothing in, he, what did he say? He was like, don't expect this. He said, don't expect this from him every night because there's nothing he's done over the course of his career. Nothing he's done over the course of his career that would uh, make you suggest that he would do something like this on a night-to-night -night basis. And I'm like, yeah, because Hassan Whiteside, you know, he usually, he, I think he averages like 14 rebounds this year, 17 points, something like that, something similar to that. But the fact that, you know, less rebounds, more points. And he was, he was a, he was a, enforcer inside. You couldn't stop him inside. He was doing turnaround jump shots. I said, who is this? This can't be Hassan Whiteside. I've seen Hassan Whiteside Snapchat like during the offseason. I see him outside playing with his boys. He's been knocking down three points, knocking down long shots, but I did not expect him to play that well last night. I guess everybody everybody had the mama mentality last night. Absolutely amazing game. Um, but um, the thing that uh, Damon Little talked about last night, of course, after the game was uh, he doesn't feel like anybody won this game uh, it's hard to feel like anybody won uh, due to the circumstances. Of course, I'm pretty sure everybody's heart was heavy. And Frank Vogel was talking about how they wanted to get a win, but he's very proud of the team, uh, the way they played. And you just had to be proud. And I'm pretty sure Kobe was proud of Damian's performance. I'm pretty sure he's just proud of everybody. We're trying to move on, trying to get better every day. And now I'm you know, trying to have that mama mentality every day. So that's all uh, we can really uh, do. And Frank Vogel uh, had pretty much perfect words last night, as well as LeBron James. Um, so Blazers win last night, 127-119, player of the game, Dame time, Damian Lillard. Next game, OKC versus the Suns. OKC gets a win. They get the win in clutch times, 
Who helps them get the win? Of course, Dennis Schroeder down the stretch, CP3, and SGA. Eight out of the 10 field goals in the fourth quarter came from those three. The other two came from, I believe, Dort and Steven Adams, I believe. Gallinari, 27 points last night. He got all his 27 points uh in the third, well, he had uh, all his field goals were made in the third quarter. I think he had 24 points and 25 points in uh, in the first three quarters, two points in the last quarter. Uh, so he didn't really help, you know, get them to the promise line, get them to win, but he was a big help overall for the win. Um, last night, Gallinari, 20, like I said, 27 points. Uh, player of the game in this one, CP3, in my opinion, 20 points, six assists. I mean, sorry, six rebounds, 10 assists. The Suns, Devin Booker and Kelly Oubre. Remember, Devin Booker, he will not be in the NBA All-Star game. He got snubbed. And I honestly still think that he probably should have got in over CP3. But they both, uh, Kelly Oubre and Devin Booker, go for 27 points last night. I was definitely on Twitter telling telling uh, uh, the Suns Twitter page, we miss Kelly Oubre in Washington because we surely do. We, we need some help here. Um, next game, Raptors and Pistons. Raptors never struggled in this one. They get the win 105-92. Derrick Rose now 14 games straight, 20-point performances. He's absolutely remarkable. He's told ownership, and I think I have it pulled up on the computer right here. Uh, he told the front office that he wants to actually stay. And he wants to stay in Detroit. And we're gonna just have to we're gonna have to just watch and see what happens. Um, so Derrick Rose says it's up to the front office. Arn gave me his word that if something were to happen, he will text or call. But I told him I want to stay here, but it's not up to me. You already know how that goes. And Derrick Rose, like I said, playing out of his mind right now. 14 games in a row over 20 points. 16 out of the last 20 games, he's been over 20 points. He has more games over 20 points this season than he has 19 and less. So Derrick Rose, I'm like, you know, and he has a very, a very reasonable contract. It's only like $7 million. It's very reasonable to trade. Like, you can real easy... But the fact that, you know, the uh, the Pistons vice chairman, Arn Talon, told him that if something does happen, we'll let you know. That's that's remarkable. That's good because, remember, it didn't happen that way for DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan just woke up and was like, oh, I'm gone. After they told him they weren't going to trade him, they just traded him anyway. So, you know, it's not really how you handle business. But um, last night, Derrick Rose, um, 21 points, three assists. Big game for Pascal Siakam. And remember the last game when they had against the Spurs for Toronto, he had, what, 25 points in the first quarter. So Pascal's got 30 points last night. Uh, not as big as the San Antonio game where he had 35 points overall, but 25, uh, 25 points. I'm sorry, 30 points last night. He had 15 points in the first half, 15 points in the second half. Serge Ibaka, 19 points in the first half. Player of the game, Pascal and Fred. And like I told you, Pascal Siakam, uh, 30.7 rebounds. Fred Bland Fleet, 16 points, 9 assists, and 8 rebounds. So he was... And he's the point guard. So, you know, he he was going up there. He was jumping up, getting them rebounds. Next game, Grizzlies versus the Pelicans. The Pelicans are starting to surge a little bit. The Pelicans are getting a little scary. I'm trying to tell you, 139 to 111, their highest point total in, in any contest this season. The last time they had at least 130 points, they had 138 versus the Utah Jazz. Remember, that was a double overtime game. They beat the Jazz. It was a 10-game win streak. They snapped the Jazz 10-game win streak. But it took overtime to do that. This four quarters only, 139 points, and they hold the Grizzlies to 111. Pelicans hit, like I said, hit a new season high. Uh, and I, Most impressive thing, Zion Williamson, 24 points. 24 points with no three-pointers. And I'm like, okay, and I was like, okay, okay, you know, <clears throat> they're doing a little something. And I actually had to tweet, I, I tweeted this out today. I had to tweet. It, I sent this out to NBA, ESPN, NBA TV, NBA on TNT, Bleacher Report. I had to send this tweet out. And the tweet was, when was the last time? Yeah, go back and look at this game. Go back and look. Just look at the stats. 15 players double digits combined from two teams. Absolutely incredible. And I was like, see, everybody's in Mamba mentality mode. Something's going on. And don't get me started on what happened in the Nuggets game. That's the next game. But like I said, Zion Williamson, 24, Ingram, 20, Lonzo Ball, 19, Drew Holiday, 18, Josh Hart, 11, Etuan Moore, 10, Nikola Melli, 10 points, Josh Reddick, uh, 16. I'm like, man, dude, I'm like, they, they're they really, they're really, oh, sorry, I said Josh Reddick, J.J. Reddick, 16. That's why I was sitting here like, wait a minute. But yeah, 16 points. I'm like, you know, I've heard of people being on fire before. I've heard of people shooting lights out, but the team, the, the squad, I was like, hold up now. They do, they do a little something, something. But yeah, player of the game, of course, you even have to ask. Zion Williamson, 28 minutes, 24 points. 
six rebounds. Four of the I mean, four of his six rebounds were offensive rebounds, and he had three assists to go along with it. Um, it looks like the Pelicans they need the Pelicans can definitely do a little something right now because remember they got it. They had to beat the Grizzlies. They beat the Grizzlies. They're the number eight spot right now. They're still fighting with the Spurs, the Kings. Uh, the Blazers, the Blazers red hot right now as well. So they're fighting right there. They're all fighting for the eight seed. But the fact that the Pelicans lost and they're one game, you know, coming one game back, Pelicans going one game up. Damon then won again last night, going another game up. Uh, it's just like, okay, Grizzlies, don't don't you lose it now. Don't you lose it. Next game, Nuggets and the Bucks. Nuggets some surprise the Bucks, 127, 115. And of course, another reason why I'm surprised: nine of the nine of the Nuggets going double figures. No Paul Millsap, no Gary Harris, no Jamal Murray. Nine of the Nuggets go into double figures. I I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> it's like I was like, what's going on yesterday? I, I just I, I was I, I was shocked, shocked, appalled. I didn't know what to be. Uh, all I knew was nine nine of the guys were in double digits. Uh, Eleven of it looks like, oh, Giannis was pretty much the reason why they lost yesterday with the Bucks. He went 11 of 27. He played good on the off of the defensive end, but 11 of 27, and, you know, everybody else pretty sh shot pretty well. 11 of 27, I think he shot one for five from the three-point line, uh, 31 points. So not too good. You only lost by only lost by 12 points. So, you know, he did miss 16 shots. So you missed more shots than points you lost by. And, uh... Like I said, remember eight players for the eight players for the Pelicans and double figures, nine players for the Nuggets. Uh, uh, the Jazz and the Bucks have now. Well, sorry, uh, the Nuggets have won over the Jazz and the Bucks now with no Paul Millsap, no Jamal Murray, and no Gary Harris. Even though I really shouldn't even count Gary Harris anymore because you know it's Gary Harris, and I told you he's having like the worst season of his career. So without Paul Millsap and without Jamal Murray, they somehow get the win. And I'm like against the Bucks. I can't believe it. Will Barton last night, player of the game for me, 24 points, six threes, eight assists, and seven boards. So he was all over the place. Next game, Bulls and the Nets. And of course, we get to the 50-point the player I was talking about, Kyrie Irving. If you want to talk about a player going off last night, it was him. He was like, I, hello, I am here. Uh, if, if you want to talk about mama mentality, that was him. 10 of 10 in the first half. 27 points. 10 of 10. And, of course, I don't know if anybody saw the, the steal he had. And if, you're, if you look on the YouTube page, it's in the intro. Uh, the the three-pointer he shot right before halftime is going to be in the intro. But, my goodness, he, they get the steal. He shoots the ball up, knocks it down from about halfway to half court, like almost to half court. He just knocks down the three, goes 10 for 10 in the first half. And then, of course, he goes 54 points overall, 7 of 9 from the three-point line, 19 of 23 shooting, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, all-star snub. And we all know, um, I'm just like, you know, I can't really be mad that he's an all-star snub. It's not like he's played a lot this season like Paul George. I like, oh, Paul George, can I all-star snubs? They haven't played that much this season, so I can't really be too mad that they were all-star snubs. Um, they shot 62.5% uh, from the floor, 484 from three-point uh, last night. The all another all-star stump, Zach Levine, 22 points, eight assists for him. So uh, a lot going on. As you can hear, a lot was going on in the NBA last night. Also, let's go to the Mavericks and the Rockets. How, how I was like, how? Because the Mavericks were almost trying to win this game last night. They lost 128-121. They brought this game back within four points. They were down, I think, 17 points or 16 points. In the fourth quarter, they brought it all the way back back down. Chris Tass Porzingis having the night of his life in in uh in Dallas, thirty five points. Oh wait, no, that's not him. Uh, sorry, uh, thirty yeah, thirty five points, twelve rebounds. If uh, if Hardaway was shooting a little better, Tim Hardaway Jr. If he was shooting a little better yesterday, they probably could have got this win. But he just wasn't on. He just wasn't on like we've seen him be on when Lucas playing and Seth Curry. He he played pretty good yesterday, but if Tim Hardaway was on yesterday. And they were actually on better from a defensive level. And James Harden was playing like the James Harden we've been seeing as of late. Dallas definitely would have won this game. But James Harden, he came back last night. 35 points, 16 rebounds, 6 assists. Only 10 of 25 shooting, so not that great. And remember, he's shooting under 25%. And he's shooting under 50% right now anyway. Uh... For 28, for 20, I'm sorry, for 2020, I said 2018. For 2020, he's shooting under 50%. He's shooting under 40%, actually. But, um, you know, 30, 35 points. You know, he got to the free throw line a few times. Russell Westbrook, 32 points, six rebounds, nine assists last night. And I'm telling you, I really thought the Mavs were going to come back. They were down 14. You see Tim Hardaway, Chris Tasperzingis. And people, somebody on Twitter, 
Um, I was, it wasn't like an argument. This person started arguing with other people, but the person says to me, and I was like, man, Chris, I said, Chris Tasperzingas is going off. So they commented and said, oh yeah, look what Chris Tasperzingas can do when he's not um, getting held back by Luca. Cause you know, Luca can be a ball hog. And I was like, you know, I really don't think Luca's a ball hog. They know he's the best player on the team. Uh, they think they, well, not they think, they know that it's probably better for him to have the ball in his hand, especially as a facilitator. He can throw nice passes. He knows how to rebound. He gets he gets to the, he gets to the line. He can pull a three. He can put anybody on skates. It's kind of better for him to have the ball in his hand. And uh, apparently somebody was just like, man, what are you talking about? Not to me, the other person. Like, what are you talking about? Luca's a ball hog. And I was like, man, y'all y'all got this. Cause I, ain't, I ain't got time for this. <laughs> I said, I ain't saying nothing wrong here. <laughs> But uh, player of the game last night, I, I, I'm going to give it to Russell Westbrook. I'm not going to give it to Harden because, you know, 10 of 25 shooting, eh, it's not that great. Kind of sounds like what Giannis did, 11 of 27 shooting. Kind of sounds like the same thing. But Rockets went 128-121. Going to some women's action yesterday in the NCAA world. Uh, UCLA, number eight UCLA, loses to number 16 Arizona, 92-66. to 66. Let me tell you again, number eight UCLA, number eight, lost to number 16 92 to 66. Yes, that, that's exactly what I said. Arizona never trailed in this game. Aaron McDonald, she's been phenomenal. She does it again. Uh, 27 points, 10 of 15 shooting. I'm like, Arizona definitely should move up in the rankings now. Uh, going uh, into Monday, they should move up in the rankings. I'm like, now they've beaten, uh, they just beat UCLA 92 66. They just beat uh, Ace, uh, Arizona State University. They beat them 59 53 all in the same exact week. Um, so I honestly believe that they should move up in the rankings. Uh, Four-game winning streak for the Wildcats. Aaron McDonald's averaging 23.7 points, 8.2 rebounds over this four-game winning streak that they're on. Uh, Friday night is going to be very interesting game. I think they play USC first, then they play the Oregon Ducks, and we know who's on Oregon. We know who's on Oregon. Uh, so it's going to be... It's going to be a real tough game, real tough game, because I know Sabrina Ioniscu, she had a triple-double the last time these two teams played. And she's pleased with the star for the Oregon Ducks. We know she's going to probably go in the WNBA probably this year. We'll see. But Sabrina, Sabrina Ioniscu, triple-double the last time these two teams played. And Oregon got the win. This game, and the, game was in, uh, the game was in Arizona. This time it's in Oregon. So we're going to see in the Pac-12, you know, the Pac-12 women, they, they got some defense. They got some defenders down there. So we're going to see if, we're going to see what happens this time around. Um, but I'm definitely excited to see what Sabrina Ioniski does this time. Uh, next game, Creighton versus number 11, DePaul. And Creighton gets the win 63-61. Olivia Elger goes off 28 points. And, folks, she'll shoot your lights out. Seven three-pointers. She'll shoot your lights out. Um, 20 to five at the end of the first quarter. Creighton was down 20 to five at the end of the third quarter. Creighton returned the favor, uh, going up 25 to eight in that quarter. Um, DePaul, uh, the last time they had the lead was the fourth quarter, uh, after Elger got, uh, oh, she got an and one. That was the last time they had the lead it was 53 50. Then DePaul goes down. They get an and one 53 53, but then Elger comes right back down four, knocks down three 56 53. So that was pretty big, and they held the lead, and they got the win that way. So it was a really good win for them. Uh, last game we have USC and Arizona State, number uh, 19. Uh, USC, sorry, Arizona State beats USC 76-75. Uh, six, six, uh, Charlie Turner thrown. She gets her 500th career win with Arizona State um, after a clutch three that came from Riley Richardson, who had 24 points, 10 to 25 shooting. Remember, 20, 10 to 25 shooting is what James Harden did last night. Uh, but she had 10 to 25 shooting, uh, 24 points. She's the one they went this game actually went into I think double overtime. And Riley Richardson, oh, I think it was a double overtime or triple, oh, triple overtime. Sorry, triple overtime. She knocked down a three that put the game away. And she got the assist from Jamie Rudin. And Jamie Rudin's only assist of the whole game in triple overtime, only assist of the whole game. She gets it to her. And yeah, she knocks down the three. And of course, like I said, player of the game. Well, definitely would have to go to Riley with some 24 points. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, India Rogers last night, she had a career high for the USC, 30 points and five rebounds. Uh, and even with triple overtime, USC only 10 points, uh, sorry, only 10 assists the whole game. So hashtag ISO bowl. Um, next game for Arizona State will be at home versus number eight UCLA. Remember, Arizona just knocked their blocks off. So we're going to see what Arizona State can do against number eight UCLA. Now, I'm pretty sure UCLA will not be in the top 10. Uh, after uh, Sunday, so uh, and I think I think that game is actually tomorrow. Yeah, Arizona State versus UCLA tomorrow, so that'll be a game to watch. 
Um, and then we just have some upcoming things we're going to talk about. Some upcoming games uh, today. Number 10, Oregon State playing Utah. That's at 2 o'clock. It's actually 2.13 right now, so that game's already started. Uh, number 3, Oregon. Uh, Sabrina Ionescu, 18 and 2, uh, co playing Colorado, 14 and 6. They're playing at 4 o'clock today. And BYU playing at Gonzaga, number 12 Gonzaga. Uh, for the men's, I have top six. I wasn't going to do a top five, but there's so many men's games on today. Number six, number nine, Duke versus Syracuse. Can't wait for that game. Number five will be number six, Louisville versus number, oh, sorry, against NC State. That's at 2 o'clock, which means it's on right now. On ESPN, uh, number four, I have number 25, Rutgers playing at Michigan. That's going to be a big game. That's at 4.30. I will see a Scotty Pippen Jr. He needs to come on for the for Rutgers. Uh, number three, we got uh, number 23, Wichita State playing Tulsa. I can't. Tulsa's been on it, man. Tulsa's been on it. So we're going to see what happens with Wichita State. Uh, number two, we have Texas Tech playing number three. Oh, sorry, number two, we have, yeah, Texas Tech playing number three, Kansas. And remember, Texas Tech almost beat Kentucky. Then they just got a big win. I can't remember who they just beat, but they just got a big win. Uh, it was the top 25 team. Oh, my goodness. I can't remember who they get. The, I can't remember, but they just got a big win. Uh, last but not least, my number one game of the night, number 13, Kentucky playing number 17, Auburn. That game's at 6 o'clock. Uh, top five. Oh, upset alert games. We have Xavier. Xavier lost today, like I told you. Xavier won 72 uh, 72 to, I didn't even write down Seton Hall score. I think they lost by like 15 points. But they beat number 10 Seton Hall. Miles Powell, 3 of 14, shooting 9 points. Uh, Tyreek Jones for Xavier, 19 points, 18 rebounds. Ridiculous. And then you had Najee Marshall for Xavier, 19 points, 10 rebounds. Some other upset games, I think. Number 5, FSU playing Virginia Tech. That could be an upset. TCU playing at number 1, Baylor. That's a trap game. Kind of nah, kind of a little bit. We're going to see what happens there. And then number 20, Colorado playing USC at 10.30. And then we have the top five NBA games for the day. The Nets at the Wizards, Kyrie versus Bradley Beal, two all-star snubs. Then we got number four, the Hawks versus the Mavs. Trey Young's been on it. Can he keep it up? Next, we have the Lakers playing the Kings. Can the Lakers bounce back from the loss they had last night? They're on a back-to-back -back schedule right now. Number two, the 76ers and Celtics. This could have been number one, but Kimba Walker's out for the next two games. And last but not least, I already told you, the Jazz Donovan Mitchell versus Dane Time and the Blazers. That's the number one game of the night for me, and I can't wait to see it. Everybody, thank you for joining me in another episode of Sports Outside the Box. The next podcast will probably be on Monday. I'm probably going to do a podcast tomorrow since, you know, it's Super Bowl. And uh, I'm going to do my top 10 hottest people right now in the NBA from shooting. And we're also going to do, I will reveal my number eight through number five picks, who I think will be in the NBA playoffs in the Eastern and Western Conference. Everybody, thank you for joining me on another episode of Sports Outside the Box. Keep that mama mentality. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody.